Back up, back up, back up. Hey, what's going on guys? Tom Davis here, America's Canon Educator. I'm here at the Upstate Canine Academy. We just got a brand new dog in. He's one of our newest board and trains and he is a nightmare on the leash. He pulls his owner everywhere. Um, this is gonna be his first session from start to finish. We're gonna go grab him. His name is Wilson. He's a beautiful golden retriever, but he doesn't know anything. A lot of you guys struggle with, how do I get my dog to pay attention to me? How do I get my dog to be less stressed, less anxious on the leash? How do I get my dog to walk better and pay attention to me on the leash? Well, right now we're gonna go in the back we're gonna grab this dog. We're gonna start right now and uh, let's see how it goes. Let's go. All right, you guys, it might get a little noisy. We're gonna go in our kennel area. And again, uh, we haven't touched him yet. He's just brand new, just came in. So let's get to work. Like I said, guys, he doesn't know anything. So um, we're gonna start, oh, off off and what watch his behavior guys there's two things that we're going to be working on in this session is obviously his his craziness but he just doesn't care like he doesn't care about me he doesn't definitely doesn't care about his owners and this is such a stressful life for a dog to not have any engagement and direction and structure they they he's choking himself out um and they just they have no job and and that's a really not a good life for any dog Okay, all right. All right, you guys, so we're up front in our training room now. As you can see, he's absolutely just crazy. No direction, nothing. The reason dogs get like this, guys, is because why not? There's no reason for them to not be like this. They don't have a job, they don't have direction, they don't have a leader, so they live their life like this. And a lot of dogs struggle with this and you have to get their attention. And there's no currency. If I just let the leash go, he's just gonna fly away from me. So I have to gain his attention. And I want to just keep in mind, guys, he already spent almost a full day in our daycare. So it's not about exercise because I made sure he went into daycare today, got some good physical and mental exercise with all the other puppies. Um, you can see that on our Instagram account, but he's a beautiful dog, but he doesn't have any structure. So obviously he's really strong, he's really powerful. I'm gonna switch to a, probably a Herm Springer 3.0. Um, I'm gonna use the Kurrigan because he has really white light fur. So off, off. Okay. So here's the, uh, pro, uh, the Herm Springer 3.0. Um, we're gonna take a link out. Pop this in and we're gonna start working them. So what, I, what I'm gonna do with the prong guys is just get his attention. I'm gonna start just telling him what, he, you know, hey, pay attention to me, man, what, what, do you, what do you think you're doing? You're living a life of just anxiety and stress and nobody can walk this dog on a flat collar or a harness. Could you imagine putting him on a harness? He'd be 10 times worse. Well, so sit. <whistles> pay attention to me. That's what I'm doing here, guys, making sure he has he can't just get away with stuff. So we're just gonna introduce, a very, this is very basic leash pressure, but it's gonna be dramatic because he had nothing before. All right, so we're just gonna do some back and forth leash pressure with him, guys. Just teaching him to go one way and the other and understanding how to shut the pressure off. Come. Good boy. Good job. Good boy, Wilson. Come. Good boy. Ah. Come. Good. Good boy. Wilson, come. Yes. Sit. Well done. Awesome, guys. Absolutely awesome. Leash pressure introduction. Pay attention to me. He goes to the end of the leash. I say, come. He doesn't respond. He gets a pop. You guys watched him. He hit the end of the leash a couple times. Or before, if he's just pulling on a leash like this, there's no way I'm going to get his attention. Look at what he's doing right now. Look at the engagement. Look at the attention that I'm getting from him. This is a relationship that dogs need in order to be mentally stable. Before he was just, I mean, you guys saw, I don't have to explain it to you. It was absolutely crazy. So I'm teaching him heal in a minute. I'm gonna teach him calm. I'm gonna teach him leash pressure. Hey man, what are you doing? Pay attention to me. And if you watch his body language in this video, you'll see him, he'll start licking. He's getting nervous. He's getting, he's getting stressed a little bit. And I just wanna point out that stress is part of success. 
It, name one thing in life that we really break through and learn and progress mental uh, and, and achieve our goals without any stress. Stress is part of what we're doing. So if you're watching his behavior, he's like, whoa, whoa, what are we doing? Because for the first time in his life, he's getting somebody to go, hey, let's go this way. Oh, okay. And he's finally gonna go, thank God. And so over the course of this session, guys, this first introduction session on the leash pressure, we're gonna make dramatic uh, uh, breakthroughs here. I'm gonna start introducing the heel command and switching up my verbals, but right now, just leash pressure. So when I say something, come or heel, and he responds without any pressure, that means he's captured it, that means he's learned. That means he has the ability to sustainably say, okay, I'm gonna do this because you said, because last time I got in trouble for it. Operant conditioning, making sure that we say, hey buddy, great job, you're doing really great today on this heel and this whatever. And then also making sure that we give him pressure and some sort of consequence. Good heel, good job, Wilson. This is an absolutely perfect heel, guys. Heel. So a couple things we're gonna do in this session is I'm gonna remove the equipment to make sure he's captured. I don't want him to just respond to the equipment. The equipment's gonna help me teach him what I want him to do, just like training wheels, when you're learning how to ride a bike or bumpers when you're bowling. They're just there in the beginning to say, this is what you can and can't be doing. Saves my back, saves his throat, but making sure that he will do these things without the equipment. And then we're also gonna go outside to see how sustainable it is outside to make sure he can pay attention. He's actually capturing these behaviors. And we're not just telling him, hey, if you pull, you get in trouble. I want him to learn like, hey, if you do this, you have a way better life. When I'm doing this, guys, is I'm just giving him a little bit of pressure. Like if he pulls, I just pop him back just a little bit. So when, you, when you're using the prong collar, guys, is you wanna make sure that you're not pulling the dog. Pulling the dog doesn't do you any good. I make, I'll make i pop a video up above you guys can check out about how to properly correct the dog and use the prong collar properly. One other important thing when introducing any type of tool to a dog that's learning something new is I'm only using the tool maybe a couple times after, after they've captured the behavior. So as you guys can see, pulling has now stopped and I'm also not having to use the equipment at all. But it's on just in case something happens. Heel. I'm giving him a lot of verbal praise, good heel, good job, good job buddy, all that stuff. And he loves that. I mean, he's a golden retriever. He likes if you look at him for all that, for all he cares. But I'm not introducing any food yet. So now because he's calm, he's stable, he's starting to say, okay, this isn't so bad. I'll start giving him a little bit of sugar on top. The treats, guys, too many people just thrive, bang, 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 bang. I'll, I'll put a video up above really dissecting more about why you shouldn't use food and treats all the time when you introduce things. And so I'm just gonna start paying him with a little bit of food now, but I would suggest watching that video if you haven't yet. Heel. Sit. Yes, good sit. Okay, buddy. Good, give him a little payment. Now we're just gonna take this collar off, guys, and we're gonna see where we're at. All right, prong collar is off. Lots of positive reinforcement, guys. 95% positive reinforcement. You use that 5% of positive punishment just to get his attention and just to tell him, hey man, I don't think you should be pulling. You're really gonna hurt my back, whatever. Good, so now I'm gonna do some sharper turns here with a distraction. Wilson, heel. Yes, buddy, good heel. Heel. Good. Distraction, his buddy from daycare. Good decision. Sit. Well done. Absolutely wonderful. Really, really happy with what he's providing me with. Okay, break with what he's providing with me right now. But it's important for you guys to understand that not only your, I mean, my job is to teach the dog, okay, this is what you should and shouldn't be doing, teaching them that manner, sending him home a more balanced dog. But the most important thing for me is now look at our relationship. It's different. He's not just trying to get to from A to B and A to B and B to C and C to D. We're actually hanging out. So it, it's bettered and changed our relationship with structure to say, hey man, pay attention to me. I'm gonna give you the stuff that you need um, and so on and so forth. So um, now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go outside, which is gonna be the final test. We're gonna pop the prong collar on because it is gonna be very distracting out there for him. But it's reality. So we're gonna put the prong on, we're also gonna put the safety clip on, which you guys can find in our store, link in the description below. Um, but if you guys haven't yet, do me a quick favor, like this video if you guys thought this was, this was helpful. We're gonna go outside and we're gonna work on the real big test, which is will this work outside in, in a realistic environment? I'm not sure because of how bad he was pulling, but let's go check it out, let's do it. You ready, buddy? Safety clip, I, I've gone over this in a lot of my videos, but if you're new here, here it is. It's literally just one clip and then the other clip. This goes on your leash, okay? And then you should always have a flat collar with your dog's tags on. 
this is going to go on the actual Herm Springer uh, flat collar as well. So the leash goes on the prong, the safety clip connects the two. That way, he's such a powerful dog. If he explodes on a chipmunk, squirrel, other dog, and the prong collar goes flying, you still got him and you're all good. So two quick tests, impulse control, building structure, building discipline, building Hey man, pay attention to me. Don't be so anxious. Don't be so uh, impulsy. Like bam, bam, bam. I'm gonna create threshold control here. This is a great exercise for anybody out there that wants to develop just a better relationship with their dog. Just teach them that they can't go through barriers without your permission. It's one of the best ways to start a good relationship with any dog. It's one of the first things we do with our board and trains here. I'm gonna start that right now. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. It's super easy, but very impactful. Heel. Wilson, sit. Good, sit. Ah, sit. Little pressure. Good sit. All right, I'm gonna do this again. He's obviously not where he needs to be. We're gonna open this. Ah, sit. Good sit. I'm gonna keep this in so you guys can see the reality of, of how this works. He, he's getting up. So this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enforce with the cue, sit. Good sit. I'm gonna pay him for the first time he sat when I opened a portal that leads him to outside. Yes, buddy, good. It opens again, good sit. Open it again. Ah, good sit, buddy. Good, okay, break. All right, so I'm gonna, sh I'm just, again, guys, this is A to B raw, real stuff. I'm gonna try to leave almost all this in as much as I possibly can. I'm gonna do this, so this is what I would do. I'd say, okay, let's make sure he's really capturing this. I'm gonna come back to the door. Wilson, sit. Good sit, buddy. Well done. Good sit. Yes, buddy. Did we understand that? Absolutely. Good sit, buddy. Okay, break. Now I let him through. So that's the big thing, guys, is I say break, which is my command to say, okay, now you can do what you want. Now we have the master portal, which is leading directly to outside. Same exact thing. Let's see how he does with this. Can already tell this is gonna be really tough for him. Nope. So again, you guys saw, bang. He gra I grabbed this, he's like, I'm out. He's gonna do the same thing out there. This portal starts your relationship in the morning, at night, in the afternoon. If you let your dog just rush out of the door, you're telling him, I don't care what you want, unless it's on you. You have to tell the dog, have some sort of behavior, some sort of cue to say, break or do what you want. Sit. Yes, good sit. And I'm desensitizing it. The desensitized process, the problem that he's having, guys, is this door opening. The desensitization process is important. What he's having a pr hard time with, guys, is me doing this, that's one step, and then me actually opening the door is the next step. So if that's the problem that he's having, which most dogs it is, I'm gonna sit here and open that door up and I'm not gonna walk through, come back, walk through and come back. I'm gonna just open the door 20 times and really work on what he has a problem with. Good boy, good sit. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yes, good decision. You guys saw that hesitancy. That was caused with operant conditioning. I have, I have studied with wolves and coyotes and I've been working with dogs, both feral, domesticated, service dog, training dogs, police dogs, you name it. I don't know it all, but I really, really, really do my hardest and my best to figure out why dogs tick and what makes them tick. And I can tell you right now from experience, there's another dog that just walked by, good job. I can tell you from experience, guys, that that little like, oh crap, I don't wanna make a mistake is, is influenced with the correction, with the positive punishment. I gave him a correction with the prong collar that said, can't make that mistake. I can tell you that I've tried, I'm a dog owner, I'm a dog lover, have been since I was a little kid. I'm gonna do what works best for the dog as well as the owners that, and the clients that I work with. That little hesitation came from punishment. Him going, I don't wanna get in trouble. I have tried the harness and, and you name it. The, the, the actual punishment came from the prong collar that said, hey, don't do that. And now I have the ability to enforce it. So sit. Just lovely. I just love these little breakthrough sessions where the dog actually goes, oh, I'm a dog and not a freaking wild beast on the leash. Yes, buddy, good sit. Another desensitizing pattern, me actually coming through. This is his first session, guys. We started at three, it's 326. He's not, he's not allowed to come through without the B word. Break! Good man, good job, good. Now, 
He's on his brake. I'm gonna answer a couple questions that I get almost every day about the heel, the brake, the prong collar. And that is, when we actually teach the dog heel and we put the prong on, do they have to heel the whole time? Absolutely not. They don't have to heel the whole time. If he's on, he's on his brake right now, he can do whatever he wants. He's on his brake, he earned it, he deserves it. He's, he's a dog that's, but, but I want you to just wa watch his behavior. He, he's on his brake and I've given him an opportunity to say, hey, be a dog. But just look at his behavior now on his brake versus the behavior before when he was just on a flat collar with zero training 26 minutes ago. All right, you guys, absolutely just, I'm, I'm excited to share this with you. It's something that we do here at the Upstate Canine Academy. If you guys haven't yet, do me a solid favor. I put videos out like this every single week. Subscribe to my channel, turn on your notification bell. We, give, we do giveaways, we do all sorts of fun stuff. Support the channel by liking, subscribing, commenting. Um, this is his first session. Okay, break. So what we're gonna do in the future is we'll do some updates on the Instagram, so make sure you follow both accounts, Upstate Canine and Tom Davis. Um, but I just wanted to show you the process of a green dog coming in with nothing, and usually our sessions are half an hour. It's 3.31 right now. We're gonna put them away, we're gonna let them rest. Uh, and then we're gonna get back at it later this evening. I appreciate you guys so much for watching. I really, really do. Uh, Wilson, I know, is, is gonna be such a good dog for his owners. I will talk to you guys next time. Peace. Give me luck. You're so sweet. You're so sweet. Hawk?